Hey guys, it's Charlie. Back in 2009, when they were trying to convince us that the stimulus package, a trillion dollar uh, special interest written stimulus package was going to save the economy, this silver bullet was going to save us. If we passed it, we wouldn't see unemployment go above 8% uh, in 2009. What the year end up at? 9.5%. In, two, in uh, 2010, we were told without stimulus, we'd be at 8.9% unemployment. With it, we'd be at under 7. We ended the year at 95 they said in 2011, without it, we'd be at 8%. With it, we'd be under 6%. And here we sit halfway through the year, more than halfway through the fiscal year, at 9.1% unemployment. 32 consecutive months of the government spending more money than it takes in, which is not uh, irony uh, as far as I'm concerned, because it's 32 months ago when uh, the bailout phenomenon began in this country where we started taking wealth that we didn't have to bail out the too big to fail. Get ready for life as you know it to change in this country. I think change is coming not only here, but around the world. Because regardless, if we raise the credit card limit, another $2 trillion, $4 trillion, $10 trillion, regardless of uh, you know how many politicians or uh, shills come on television telling you that these financial juggernauts have it all figured out, the idea that QE2 is coming to an end, it should send a, a red flag up for everybody. Suddenly, we're going to lose the, the largest purchaser of U.S. debt, the Federal Reserve. So the game plan is simple. You either uh, stop quantitative easing and let a deflationary depression ensue that will make the Great Depression look like a walk in the park, or you keep quantitative easing going to infinity and you usher in hyperinflationary depression that's going to make the Weimar Republic uh, look like a day in wrong room, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, the solution is always the same. We'll throw the world into war and we'll call it prosperity on the backside. That's all I got.